I'm the affordable woodworking guy, but I'll tell you a secret. I love fancy, expensive tools. If you've got a hand plane that looks like a spaceship, I really want to try it out. And for years, people have been telling me that I should review the Bridge City Dual Angle Bench Plane. It really does look like a spaceship, and it costs between $500 and $1,000 depending on when you buy it, and I buy all the tools that I review, so no thanks. But one of my amazing patrons purchased a dual angle plane and offered to send it to me before he even tried it. I could not say yes fast enough. Unpacking the plane is a luxury experience from the beginning. The box, the padding, even the paper inserts are crisp, beautiful, and inviting to the touch. But whenever I see packaging like this, I can't help thinking, who pays for this? And the answer is, you do. Fancy packaging increases the price of tools, maybe by a lot, but whatever. You cannot argue with this executive presentation. Super classy. But what's this? It's a plain sock. Plain sock. Plain sock. I just don't get it. I guess the sock is supposed to protect the plane, but this plane's over 100 years old, and it's been in a sock one time in its whole life, 10 seconds ago. It's still in perfectly good shape. So I guess I just don't understand. Anyway, if you're considering the Bridge City dual angle plane, here's the sales pitch. The dual angle bench plane is ultra precision machined from top quality materials. The blade is locked in place with this lever action cap that's attached to the body. It's innovative and it works exactly as advertised. The plane comes with multiple blades ground at different angles, which gives you a bunch of different pitches. I always thought dual angle meant that there was like a lever you could flip that would actually change the bed angle like while you were planing. That would be cool, but now that I think about it, I realize that would be insane to actually engineer. Including different blades with different angles, that was probably a lot smarter. The plane comes with accessories like these attachable depth stops that allow for super accurate dimensioning of small pieces of wood. Probably a great feature for instrument makers or kumiko, but not particularly useful for furniture making. And Topping the whole thing off is this classy cast rear handle with an open design, which is kind of uncomfortable. Those openings in the handle leave edges, which don't feel great against the hand, and the whole tote is made of metal, so it's always cold. I used this plane all day for several days, and it wasn't very comfortable. Now, premium planes like this one promise out-of-the-box performance, and that's not easy. Here's the very first cut, and I'm struggling, but that's not the tool's fault. This plane is just different than what I'm used to. After some fiddling, the plane takes a shaving right out of the box. A minute later, the tool was pulling beautiful shavings off this board one after another. I was absolutely impressed. But I couldn't resist taking the same cut with my old Stanley, and it was very similar. I'm not saying the two tools are equally good, but I can't help comparing this expensive tool to my daily user. The more I dialed in the Bridge City plane, the better it got. The shavings were smooth and feathery. The surface was glistening. This was truly premium performance. Now, edge planing is a lousy test of any tool. Face planing is much more challenging. And so far, the Bridge City is doing great. This piece is just white pine, but I picked it because it's filled with knots, and I would expect this piece to tear out. This is the low angle blade with the factory edge. I haven't even honed it yet, and the results are excellent. It's sliced right through those knots, and the surface is very nice. Let's move on to hardwoods. Right away, this piece of walnut is giving me problems. The plane doesn't want to engage, and the blade is barely cutting. I'm adjusting the depth and changing my grip and just doing anything I can think of to get a good cut. It's not going well. Okay, some pieces of wood are just difficult to plane, so let's change this out for a nice piece of red oak. Clear grain, no knots, should be a piece of cake. 
This board is pretty flat, but I just can't get a continuous shaving. The plane cuts at the beginning of the stroke and at the end, but in the middle, it hardly touches the wood. I also can't feel the iron engaging with the cut. I feel like there's something in between the blade and the work. I've seen this a lot of times on cheaper planes. It usually means the sole is bowed and it has a big hollow in the middle. But that can't be what's going on here. This tool is precision machined. The tolerances look ultra tight. Obviously, the sole is flat and I'm just doing something wrong. Let's put a good straight edge along that sole and if I see any light, then, oh, that's a lot of light. That's a lot of light and it's showing all along the sole. I think this plane is out of flat and I think I need to lap it. If the sole is really hollow, then the black ink will get worn off at the toe and the heel, but the ink in the middle will still be there. We'll just take a couple of strokes on the sandpaper and yeah, nothing at the heel, nothing at the toe and a ton of black ink in the middle. This plane is bowed, and not by a little bit. So I lap it, and lap it, and lap it. That's gotta be enough, right? After all that, I think I can still see some ink here in front of the mouth, and that surface is critical. So I drew three lines right in front of the mouth, took a few strokes, and yep, they're still there. I should mention that this is 100 grit paper. It's aggressive and I still spent over an hour getting this thing flat. I was surprised. For what this plane costs, I expected the sole to be dead flat. When all the ink was gone for good, I tested the plane on this short scrap of oak and now the performance is flawless. The shaving is delicate, but also full length and full width and the surface is excellent. Now the plane is working beautifully and it's time for some more demanding tests. Low angle planes are great for end grain, and this piece of red oak could be very challenging to square up. The Bridge City plane handles it really well. The tool has enough mass to power through those tough end grain fibers, and the blade is made from A2 steel, so it stays sharp even when you're working with demanding woods. The final surface on this end grain is perfect, flat and smooth with no chatter and no torn fibers. A plane like this should be good at the shooting board, but it's not good. It's great. That shape is easy to hold, the sides are dead on 90 degrees to the sole, and that blade just keeps gliding through this end grain. This part is super precise, and that end grain has perfect clarity. The crazy part is I still haven't sharpened this blade. This is still the factory edge. So I guess it's time to sharpen up. To remove the iron, that space age lever cap pops up and then, look, I, I promise I'm not playing this up for the camera. I really couldn't figure out how to get the stupid blade out of the plane until I turned it over and the blade fell out. And then I looked it up. This is actually how you're supposed to remove the blade. The Bridge City plane comes with two blades and each one is sharpened on both ends, giving you a total of four edges. And I can completely understand why they did this, but I cannot be the only one who thinks that sharpening a blade on both ends is a bad idea, especially when getting the blade out means turning the plane upside down and letting a heavy, razor sharp, double ended blade fall into your hand. I can't be the only one who thinks this is a bad idea. Now. Each blade does have one of these little aluminum covers that attaches with magnets. That really helps with the safety issue, but we still need to sharpen this thing, and I'm concerned about how that's going to go. A2 steel is very hard, so I need to use diamonds. I've reviewed this set of cheap diamond stones last year. They're pretty fantastic for the price. They used to be four for $20, but they've actually gone down in price. And now you can get all four for $17. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. I think Bridge City wants you to use their honing guide, and that would obviously make this much safer, but I'm a freehand guy, and I'd like to at least try and do my usual thing. And listen, this is awkward. That little cover comes off instantly. To hone this short iron, I need to push on the back with my thumbs. I finally do get it together and start sharpening, but I'm pretty nervous the whole time. 
Woodworking isn't my hobby, this is how I make my living. And slicing up my fingers could cost me days of work. I barely get going and the cover pops off again. You can see me looking at my thumbs to make sure I'm not bleeding. Over here, on my finer stones, I'm cambering the iron, easing back the corners so I don't get tracks in my work. But even this simple operation is a struggle, and the cover comes off yet again. That's it. I'm calling it. I like Bridge City. I really want them to succeed. Hand tool woodworking is a small, difficult industry. We need lots of manufacturers at lots of price points. I want there to be expensive, fancy tool makers out there. I like fancy tools a lot. But the dual angle bench plane had a, a lot of shortcomings. It has a number of design features that I just don't agree with, and the sole was not flat. And it took a lot of work to fix. This tool is also quite expensive, and it's made in China, which surprised me. I've reviewed a lot of Chinese-made tools on this channel, and I don't mind doing that. People need affordable tools. But it's a lot harder for me to recommend a Chinese-made tool if it's not affordable. I am also not the audience for this tool. I make simple, traditional furniture, and I use mostly basic, vintage tools. I've never really bought into the idea of one hand plane that'll do all these different things. You can do it. You can get a Stanley number no. 5 and use a couple of different blades. That works, but changing blades in between operations is actually a big time waster. Just being able to grab different planes for different things is much faster. It's much more efficient. So when I see a tool where you're constantly swapping blades, I think, well, that's, that's not really for a working furniture maker. That's not for somebody who cares about efficiency. Also, if I'm being honest, I don't buy this concept that you need all these different planes at all these different pitches. All of my tools, wood and metal, are at 45 degree common pitch. In fact, that's the only pitch that Stanley made. And Stanley, they liked to make money. If they could have sold planes at different pitches, you can bet they would have. They would have sold you a can opener if they could have. They probably did. I should look that up. If Stanley didn't sell planes in multiple pitches, it's probably because there wasn't any demand. And sure, there are some people out there who work with very challenging woods, and they need high-angle, low-angle planes. But most of us probably don't. If you work with standard hard and soft woods, common pitch is probably going to get it done. So when I look at the Bridge City dual-angle plane, I think what this is is a... It's a tool for a rich woodworker who enjoys fiddling with tools, who likes playing around with different things, and there is nothing wrong with that. I am fond of playing around with tools myself. But I think the whole concept of a four-in-one, multi-angle, only plane you need, I, I think it's unrealistic for people who want to focus on building stuff, who want to focus on building furniture. I hope I get to try more Bridge City tools in the future. I really respect their dedication to innovative new features, and I want to try more of their stuff as it comes out. Now, if you're in the market for a low-angle plane, I have to give my recommendation to Veritas. Their low-angle smoother and low-angle jack are both outstanding. They are surprisingly affordably priced for what you get, and they're made in Canada. Now, as much as I like those, my loyalty still lies with vintage Stanleys. You can still go on eBay today, get a good vintage Stanley for 30 or 40 bucks. Yes, you really can. And fix it up, and a lot of these are fantastic tools. In fact, I am in the middle of shooting a course in how to restore vintage Stanley hand planes right now. And that course is going to be ready in time for the holidays. If you want to be sure that you get a notification about that, sign up for my mailing list, Fabrication First. It is a free monthly newsletter about woodworking that we, we really just send out for free. It's not a substack. We don't charge for it. And it's a real article that anybody can get for no money. And yeah, once in a while, we tell you about new things and special deals, but mostly it's just free content. We will put a link to that down in the description. Patreon.com slash Rex Kruger. I would never be here without my patrons, including my patron Brian, 
who generously loaned me his Bridge City plane before he even got to look at it and let me mess with it and lap it flat and all that stuff. It was, it was amazing. I am a member of a fantastic community. You can click the link down in the description and check out all the rewards you get for $5 a month, which is how these videos happen. And to my viewers, thanks for watching. We appreciate you a lot. See you soon.